The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome, everybody, to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. We've got a great day coming out here. And, of course, uh, the markets are moving a little bit, kind of. Uh, they're trying to move, uh, kind of like uh, swimming in molasses. We're down at six points on the S&P Cash, 1.8 billion shares to start the show. So kind of in the same kind of ballpark that we were yesterday. Maybe a little lighter volume out here than yesterday. We'll have to see how today ends up. Very surprising uh, because of the news out here. In fact, it may be because everybody is ignoring the news. And uh, let's say that a world market, um, let's say like Germany, the DAX was down 6%. I think we'd probably hear a little more about it. Uh, but uh, uh, trying to ignore and uh, the bad news today, at least on the financial infotainment circuit today, uh, I'm going to claim that they are doing an incredibly poor job. I have a feeling that if a market drops 10% in a couple of days, we probably should be talking about it a little bit on uh, CNBC, Bloomberg, slash Fox Business News. Just a thought. Maybe it's an issue. My guess is that, that uh, we'll get talking about it in a little bit, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, other things of interest out here, of course, is the super light volume, both up and down. A little lighter down the last couple of times. My guess is that they are holding this market up into Friday and Monday, and we're probably going to see the equivalent of what we saw last month, which is, uh, at least from TrimTab's data, that there isn't a lot of cash coming into this market. There isn't a lot of cash to throw into the market. Uh, people are adding leverage back here. And as long as the VIX remains probably under 18, uh, we can probably see them continue to do it. The I've talked about this for probably a year or two. And that is the leverage that a lot of these funds and uh, ETFs and everything can uh, use is based on a model. That model, uh, one input on it is, uh, of course, the volatility. And if uh, the volatility would start to go up, a lot of people, whether their stocks went down or not, would have to start selling uh, to uh, fit in the risk model that was basically imposed on the markets by Dodd-Frank. Uh, two guys who probably couldn't know less about the stock market. Uh, my guess is it's the atomic bomb uh, that's always in the background ticking uh, where selling would beget even huge and more selling. Uh, and uh, to this point, maybe one of the reasons why this market hasn't pulled back at all uh, for a while or significantly uh, without a huge interdiction by the Treasury and the Fed. That is, they're afraid that the whole thing could blow up in their face and uh, become a self-fulfilling prophecy of uh, selling beget selling. They'd have to step in and say, well, you know, you really can't sell uh, or close the markets or do something else stupid. Uh, and there's a long and rich history of especially politicians getting involved in that. Uh, I remember Nixon trying to whip inflation now. There are other things going on like that. But... Uh, as always, I tend to digress. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1986, the U.S. Appeals, uh, Court of Appeals upholds the conviction of a writer. His name was uh, Foster Wins for securities frauds. Winnens, uh, author of the uh, Heard on Wall Street column that ran for a number of years, entered into a scheme with two brokers at Keter. Keter. Keter, Kidder, Kidder Peabody to advance them uh, information about what he was going to write about. And, of course, the brokers, uh, Mr. Felis and Brandt, 
made 700 grand by uh, trading stocks that uh, Weens touted in this newspaper. Uh, basically, Weens and his uh, lover uh, received uh, only about $31,000 in kickbacks, but uh, old uh, Mr. Weens uh, spent a huge amount of time uh, in jail, uh, about 18 months after all was said and done. Uh, the other two guys went off to jail, I think, for 24 months as they were industry uh, professionals. But this isn't the first time this happened. It's probably the first time that uh, the it was so blatant that uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission didn't look the other way. You know, I always remember the great scene in uh, the uh, Godfather movie. I think it's Godfather 2 where they're all sitting around the table. And the one guy, uh, of course, they were all Italians. The one guy with the thicker, thickest of Italian accents says, uh, you know, I used to pay my guys extra so they wouldn't get involved in drugs. But uh, it became too much, and I just couldn't keep them from it. My, all, my thought out here um, was uh, that uh, just how much um, that uh, that kind of stuff goes on and... Uh, people are paid off and wives and girlfriends end up being the bag people uh, for other people, uh, whether it be cattle futures, all kinds of stuff. But uh, interestingly enough, uh, the uh, whole deal was uh, uh, made to uh, come out into the light. Um, basically, when Keter, Keter, why do I keep saying that today? Kidder Peabody uh, noticed a strange coincidence. Basically, the FC, SEC and the feds, the FBI, were already in their office. They said, you know what? Uh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked to see this. Yes, it, it certainly looks like someone was making a lot of money by getting inside information about what was going to be printed in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, anyway, they got some, uh, got 18 months. Uh, strangely enough, uh, Mr. Waynes, 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 uh, was uh, said that uh, he was uh, kind of admitted that it changed his life for the better uh, after he got out, of course. Uh, but uh, at the same time, very strange uh, episode in history. But uh, not the first time this goes on and not the first time that uh, the press is willing accomplices uh, to an ongoing <laughs> criminal conspiracy. And the question is, uh, if, if you don't say anything about it, is it a lie? Um, when you really read about it, everybody apparently at uh, Kidder Peabody knew. This guy actually wrote a book. You can get it on Amazon. I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. Eh, I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, but uh, it's a uh, Kind of interesting reading to figure out just how hard everybody tries to look the other way. And all I could think of was the FIFA or FIFI thing. What is it? FIFA, the uh, soccer thing where everybody else is looking the other way. Um, there is a great special that's going to be on tonight. I've talked about the author, Mr. Arley, uh, several times. His first book is absolutely uh, incredibly important to read, especially if you're interested in how people truly think, which is part of being a trader, to put your uh, put yourself in other people's mind. Anyway, he's got a uh, special tonight on CNBC at, uh, I think it's 10 p.m. is when it runs, and it's uh, basically about lying. But uh, you would be well served. I haven't seen it yet, but I think you would be well served to at least put it on your TiVo and check it out. And certainly his first book uh, about irrationality, and that is that we tend to think a lot about uh, the way that these uh, people are, uh, um, how can I say that? Uh, how people think, we think they're going to be rational and they're insane. Um, but uh, I do digress. But anyway, uh, very interesting uh, goings on out here. Uh, for those people that live in Tampa and several other cities, uh, I think three others today, uh, it is now 14 cities, including me. That is why it's so important in, in the news today. 
that uh, Amazon Prime is issuing same-day service. Uh, you can go to the website and check out the zip code and see whether you're going to get it or not. But, uh, you know, I was kind of a very big a Amazon skeptic for a long time, mostly because they refused to ever make any money. I still suspect that the stock could come down by 50% or more uh, when the true price earnings ratios come out over the, uh, over the years. 6% uh, margin, no matter how big it is, doesn't mean that you're suddenly worth 100 times what Walmart is worth. And that's the, basically the crutch of it. If they were making huge margins, uh, we'll say like uh, printing software uh, or that kind of stuff, it would be different. But uh, they're basically making their 4 or 5% uh, like a giant grocery store, uh, but priced like a printing press that is uh, printing $100 bills. And uh, that's always going to be my issue with them. Incredibly expensive for what you get. But uh, a great company just at the same time doesn't mean that you can't be overpriced. But uh, I suspect it's going to be very tough for me using their service and be short at the same time. But uh, it is interesting. Uh, we talked, uh, what, a week, maybe 10 days ago. And if you haven't looked... And you would have to look, and maybe even dig, to find out that uh, the Shanghai Stock Exchange was off 6% today. Did, has anybody actually heard this? Because I fast-forwarded all of today's programming, and I could not see it once anywhere out here. But uh, we talked about the, these fraudulent companies in China, and uh, the latest shooter to drop out here is a company called Hanergy. Uh, they are a solar cell company. What a surprise. Um, could, could it be easier to pick out the fraudulent companies in China? One, they're a Chinese company. Two, they're in the solar cell business. Uh, but uh, we were brought up uh, Gene, Gene Herman Munster, who ironically lives at 1313 Mockingbird Lane, if anybody gets that reference. Uh, he's the Piper Jeffrey mouthpiece that's always on CNBC. Uh, not always a horrible shill. Uh, kind of uh, having to eat a lot of humble pie over the last uh, month or so now that Apple says that they're not going to be making their Apple TV. He had all kinds of uh, numbers on Apple to double and triple because of Apple TV. Uh, I said how tough it was going to be for them to actually ever get this out because Hollywood hated them so much from the blowback of them destroying the music industry. No one wants Apple anywhere close uh, to the video industry. And uh, those guys in the video industry, a lot, lot smarter and twice worn from the auto industry. When we come back, we're going to play with Mr. Munster, conversation with Munster we played about 10 days ago, in case you missed it. But uh, very illuminating. And I will have a I told you thusly after that. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Anyway, we were talking about Hanergy, which is a Chinese company uh, with solar. And uh, I don't know, is that like hitting a hat trick? of uh, fraud and deception. Anyway, this thing was off 50% already, and it's closed for trading, and who knows if it's real. Uh, articles about this thing have been circulating for a long time. Face, uh, I think finally the Chinese themselves could not ignore it. This had been one of these stocks that had gone up about 800%, uh, all in the last five minutes of trading every single day. In fact, I brought this story up, I think, a month ago, or maybe back in March. And anyway, of course, uh, now someone actually uh, put a flashlight on it and all the rats have scattered. Uh, and of course, uh, we've seen the cockroaches. So, uh, of course, this company actually made the richest uh, man in China. So the question is, will he still be the richest man in China? I don't know how big uh, this is all about him. But uh, it uh, it is most likely... Uh, at least, it, let me put it this way, it stinks to high heaven. I don't know if, what's going on. In fact, no one knows what's going on over there. And I played this from Gene Herman Munster of 1313 Mockingbird Lane, who happens to work at Piper Jaffray. 
uh, 10 days ago. Has that crossed your Absolutely. mind? Absolutely. You, okay. that, that has. It crossed my mind with all my Chinese companies and, and uh, more with the Chinese companies than with the U.S. companies. And I think when you're dealing with this, there's a 5% chance I'm dead wrong and this could be nuclear. But I don't think that that's the case. But shouldn't the stock trade at a discount if there's a 5% chance that it's a zero? I mean, shouldn't the... The SEC, there should be a regulator. There's one regulator for these companies. It's the SEC. And the SEC has no ability to call the country of China. None. And, of course, we were talking about uh, VIP uh, shop. I think it's VIPS. V-I-P-S is the symbol on it. Uh, the interesting part about that whole thing was, of course, that the uh, books and the way that they're reported in China and by the SEC are off by an order of magnitude. From each other, and they had to admit that they lied about how many retail stops that they had, and there was no no repercussion for that because, of course, you can do nothing to them. I warned everybody back uh, when uh, I think it was uh, well, it was one of the big uh, Chinese companies went public uh, that it would be a problem uh, because there, you really don't own anything over there. You own kind of a holding company that may hold something, but who knows? Uh, it's all a house of cards over there. Just be incredibly careful if you're in any of these Chinese stocks. Like I said, uh, the Shanghai index was down 6% today. And you can't even get CNBC to mention the thing, uh, or at least as far as I can tell. I fast forward through all the day. I didn't even see it in the morning where normally at least some people bring it up. But uh my guess is that this thing, of course, uh, we're going to come in tonight. Uh, I'm wondering how much of that is actually going to uh, relate to other markets when they open up tonight. Uh, I think a lot of more than a few people uh, saw that dive and are wondering. Of course, the issue behind it is why they continue to try to make cash easier. It continues to just be funneled back into the stock market, not into uh, methods of production and new businesses, and they wonder why. And the answer is, of course, that they're in a bubble. But uh, it's pretty much uh, hard to even come up with an idea of how this uh, works in the long term. But uh, this is the way bubbles are when you're in them. Everybody says you can't tell. I can. Uh, other things and random thoughts. I don't know if I've got enough time to get my random thoughts in here today. But uh, if there is anything why the markets are quiet here and not really moving very far is the inherent uh, way that markets move. And uh, all my experience of the last 16 years has told me that they are counterintuitive. And uh, from racing motorcycles um, and pushing on the handlebar for the way that you want it to go, not steering the way you want to go, you actually steer opposite of the way you want to go. It's called counter steering. In fact, I went to a motorcycle school where the instructor, who was a very good instructor, not ever a big motorcycle racer, he just knew how to break things down and teach kids, actually welded the bars straight on a motorcycle. And all the people that used to tell him that all they had to do is lean and the motorcycle would uh, turn. Uh, so he welded the bars shut and made everybody that kept on trying to tell him that that's the way it worked go out there and ride it. And he said, go into that corner, 100 mile an hour and lean. Now, the bars are welded shut. Well, no one ever did it. And, of course, they would go up and down the, the uh, entrance and exit to the uh, racetrack. And they finally would have to say, well, yeah, you do have to move the bars. And you have to move in the counter way that you would think. Anyway, we're going to talk more about being counterintuitive. Great example I saw last night. We'll bring that up when we come back. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. 
Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're like me, you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity, as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes. And you can rest assured that Everbank has spotted this opportunity too. In fact, they have just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Futures Economy CD. This is a CD that could really deliver, but you only have until June 11th to take advantage. Consider the facts. If the future economy's currencies beat the U.S. dollar over the CD term, you'll get all of the upside at maturity. And should they lose, no worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you get back 100% of your deposited principal. Don't miss out. The June 11th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Amy, she doesn't say where she's from, says that uh, they did mention it all morning on CNBC. I don't know. I fast forwarded it through a bunch and never saw it. But, um, I will take her word for it. I didn't watch all of it. But uh, I didn't see lots of charts and hang ringing. If they mentioned it, it probably wasn't very long or I would have caught it. Of course, I normally don't listen to it. I fast forward through it and read the uh, closed caption on it. So I don't have to and be affected by all the intonations of uh, the news readers. But uh, eh, I digress. Anyway, we were talking before I went about just how counterintuitive the markets are and how they try to get you to do the worst thing at the worst time, at least uh, for your portfolio val value. Um, but uh, it kind of made me think of uh, somebody, and I just happened to see this over the last few days, but uh, there was a gentleman named Ernesto Mapimba, and I think he was from Tanzania. He was a college student in the 60s. 
But um, he was uh, working uh, and going to college. Uh, and I can't remember which college, which college it was. But uh, anyway, he basically they went and figured out, uh, or he was uh, working in the cafeteria to work his way through school. And he was making ice cream, put uh, two different kinds of ice cream, uh, one that was hot and hadn't cooled on the counter, and the other one uh, that had cooled on the counter in their freezer so that the ice cream, ice cream would freeze up for the students so that he could serve later. Uh, and uh, he went back in and checked, and there was, you know, he was told not to put in the hot ice cream into the um, freezer. Well, the hot ice cream froze be uh, before the one that had cooled off on the counter. And being a physics student, he, uh, he thought, uh, this can't be. There's something really wrong. So he started doing tests. In fact, he went to his physics professors and told them of his results, and they all told him he was all wet. Well, come out, uh, come to find now, what, 50 years later, uh, there's a thing called the Mpemba uh, effect. And basically, if you stick some water in uh, a freezer and two beakers in the same freezer, one that's about 45 degrees and one that's about uh, 95 degrees, the one that's 95 degrees will freeze before the one that's 45 degrees. There are a lot of debates on why this happens, but one thing that we know is that you can reproduce these effects. And uh, he had to fight almost six months with his physics professor because it breaks all the laws that you would think. It's counterintuitive to everything that you know. And if you go on YouTube, what's hysterical is... How many people have YouTube videos of them boiling water and then um, taking it out in, well, like 10 degrees outside, 5 degrees outside, taking the boiling water and throwing it up in the air, and it all just instantly vaporizing and turning into little ice crystals, and it's gone. If they take regular water at about 45 degrees and throw it up in the air, all they do is get wet. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of things that are counterintuitive out there, and it just uh, continues to be uh, – uh, uh, that was it. Uh, anyway, a lot of things are counterintuitive. I just don't want everybody to think uh, that uh, I am bearish for no good reason. Uh, the easiest thing would be to be bullish up here. I just do not see it. Amy checks back in, still doesn't tell me where she's from, but she said uh, she was short Baidu and she saw it this morning and had to go AS, ASAP to see what was happening. So uh, maybe she was more focused on it than I was. But uh, I had to dig for that Shanghai news. Anyway, uh, as always. That was Deep Insights and Random Thoughts. So we'll get to charts here. I know I've been kind of slow uh, getting to it out here. Uh, was there anything else out here? No, that's my last thought for the day. I guess I get to do it. Uh, to, 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 oh, I was going to get into charts out here. Had one question in the den where we go up at VRX. VRX, which is Valiant Pharmaceuticals. I suspect that he's looking... Uh, that we hit the ABC at 261. And let's take a quick look at this. And uh, yeah, your a one to one is too. Actually, the short a ABC one to one got hit today. It was 246.45. Uh, I'll zoom in on that so you can actually see here. Um, if you look at your A point being uh, the 28th, the B point uh, is uh, the 30th, and your C point out here came out on the 7th on VRX. That's the very short term. So you've got a small ABC that's coming out here today. Uh, I don't see a longer one out here. Uh, let's go back a little farther. Maybe there's some giant one out here I do not see. Okay, all that consolidation would ruin that. Uh, no, I kind of see this one. That's probably it out here. You got a nice little doji out here. Uh, to me, um, 
the only clean ABC that I see is that one right there. And that would take you to today's 246.45. You got to 246.01. Still could go a little higher. Nice doji out here, though, today. And uh, maybe a little close lower. So I don't see the 265 one. Maybe he has that. Um, okay, Dave, how do you pick uh, what time frame possibilities on art of the chart expansions? Uh, basically, uh, mine are uh, pretty much I always use daily charts. I like to see all the interaction and what happened and gaps that happened. And weeklies uh, will all meld back into that. I use my power law vector indicator for it. Uh, but uh, it, for swing trading, you want to look at trends that are somewhere between 7 and 21 days. Uh, I've gone back and run a bunch of studies, and that's pretty much it. So that's why I use a daily chart. I don't spend a lot of time on weeklies. They hide too many things like all these gaps, uh, a lot of other stuff back out here uh, that you only see back in a daily chart. So my basically, I try to do and look at these runs out here that for the most part, they will end up being 7 to 21 days. This one tends to be a little longer. But uh, that, if you're swing trading, which I, th I assume at least if you're looking at daily charts, you've got to be. If you're an investor, then you're probably more interested in fundamentals. But as a swing trader, ABCs, all that stuff, the sweet spot is somewhere between 7 and 21 days. I suspect that's because there's an average of 22 days in the stock market, uh, in the uh, trading every month of actual trading days and uh, that uh, options expiration puts enough whammy on it to get a pullback or an advance uh, somewhere on those monthly cycles. But uh, they tend, um, I know a lot of people talk about uh, solar or moon cycles, that kind of stuff. I suspect it has a lot more to do with uh, the expiration. And if you do a study on expiration day, I think you're going to find that a lot of what happens is uh, much more geared to that Friday expiration over the last 20 years. As more and more weekly uh, options expirations happen, as people use uh, weeklies, that may subside. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't seen it uh, move out of that so far. Um, da -da -da, yeah. Basically, that's it. Probably I would work, look at those uh, 7 to 21 day moving days. And there's no guarantee. Another reason I don't spend a lot of time on uh, monthly and weekly charts is they hide. What if it happened on the first day, if it was an up move? What if the down mood ha happened on the last day of that week? Uh, to me, I'm more interested in the pink, the uh, pink, the peak amplitude of each move. That is, I'm looking for the extreme of the energy, both to the high and to the low. Um, it's nice to know how many and how long it took for that peak to go from, you know, in this case, back from 138 bucks to 206, back on the right side of this chart. But to me, it is much a bigger deal. Now uh, we're going to get into as many stocks as we can. It's Amy from Orlando, by the way. She's checking back in. I feel like Foursquare today. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's go through things. Uh, Broadcom uh, is uh, out here today. Of course, uh, they are being acquired uh, off a little bit, so not as bullish as they were yesterday when Avago bought them uh, or was planning to buy them. Um, one of the guys from Shark Tank, I can't remember which one it is, uh, he's always on CNBC. He had a good uh, uh, discussion about why a lot of these buyouts are happening now. And, you know, he said basically if uh, uh, interest rates were 4.5%, these things would be going off at about 60% of the value that they're going out now. But because of free money out here, if you're buying somebody, uh, does it really matter if you're getting free cash? He said that, of course, when interest rates go to 4.5%, the chances of selling any of your companies for those kind of pie in the sky numbers like these today are probably far. Yeah, Kevin O'Leary, thank you. Uh, Peak D in the den. Um, anyway, to me, uh, it's something Broadcom, I suspect, is going to be dancing uh, until they die that they sold out here at the top. Uh, that even if they did well 
as interest rates go up, it's going to be very, very hard to ever uh, figure out how they come back there. For Avago, uh, they needed at least uh, the, uh, the might that Broadcom bought them uh, to get into China. They were having a lot of problems going up against Qualcomm. Uh, Avago and them together, probably a much better deal. Uh, Avago is way too, uh, this is one thing I hate about companies. I'm, one of my bosses early on, especially you know, he came from Scientific Atlanta, uh, when the company split off and the one I went to work for was actually there. Um, but he basically lambasted any idea of building a product with a single customer. And for Avago, they are so hugely leveraged to what Apple is doing that if anything happened in Apple, uh, you could see this company cut in half or a maybe a quarter of the value that it is now if something significantly happened. I suspect that it was smart for them to use the cash and uh, the ability to go after uh, cash uh, to buy Broadcom and maybe diversify themselves out of the Apple ecosystem if anything bad happened. Uh, it would still hurt them significantly, but at least they're not a one-legged stool. They're a two-legged stool. Yeah, they need one more leg. Uh, but I do digress. Uh, other stocks out here with a lot of movement. Uh, we'll be talking uh, kind of this is, we're kind of getting into the very end of uh, fund buying. So, um, I mean, not fund buying, but uh, of earnings. So we still have a few of these companies that have come out. i got to get back up to my, I'm so scrolled down on my news feed here. Maybe uh, if I find it out here. Uh, where's it at? I oh, mean, I was way down in there. Uh, underperforming following cautious comments from the CEO at the investor conference, indicating that May sales have been very weak. United Rentals sells a lot of uh, equipment, uh, incredibly uh, a huge amount to the building and industrial building community. Uh, that has really tapered off along with the housing uh, market. A lot of people making uh, use of, especially in business, making use of low interest rates. Now that they're starting to tick up, a lot of these people have already had gone ahead and bought the, uh, bit the bullet and, uh, now we're getting into this point now where uh, a lot of that industrial uh, business building uh, instead of the re uh, commercial real estate for uh, individuals, I guess it is con uh, commercial real estate, uh, is over. And that's what they're talking about. Uh, Everybody has pretty much used all the equipment they've had. And uh, if you're not familiar with these guys, they have, I think, 14,000 cherry pickers to rent and a bunch of other stuff like that. But uh, uh, the, even the hint of slider interest rates over the last six months had a lot of people move and do something. Uh, the problem is now uh, probably not a big a deal to rent United Rentals stuff. Of course, uh, retail um, and uh, household building, uh, same thing. Maybe a lesser degree from what uh, the comments were this morning. But uh, United Rentals down on heavy volume looking to go back to the low of $81.25 that we saw back here on January 16th, not that long ago. But my guess is that we've got uh, plenty of uh, volume and some untested uh, lows out here on heavy volume for $81.25. Uh, tech data, uh, another one. It was up actually a little bit. Uh, earnings of $0.80 cents per share, uh, a little better than uh, what everybody was looking for out here. Uh, still back in its trading range. Uh, let's see if there's anything else out here that we looked at. But uh, I don't know. Looks like it's going to be tough. We'll be back in a minute. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at pfnn.com. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. 
As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we come back, a few other stocks out here with the news that are moving them a little bit. Uh, kind of interesting to see Copart out here uh, uh, eating it, as they like to say, off 3% uh, reported to Q3 earnings of 44 cents per share, five cents worse than the, the estimate. Uh, revenues fell 4.1% uh, over the year, and I think that's all you've got to know about that. On a longer-term scale out here, they broke through the January 16th low, and uh, it looks like it's going to be through twice the volume. Um, again, one of the things you have to look at out here are high volume lows that are untested. You certainly have that with the October 15th, 2014 low at $29.93 for, so watch out below. 
what else do we have going on out here? Uh, Erickson uh, popped on a little bit of news. I don't think there's a lot uh, to see out here. It was upgraded from City Group. Uh, GoPro, uh, again, one of these super highly shorted stocks. Uh, hard to see how this thing is anywhere close to this. But again, when you have very thinly traded stocks sliver of what's actually tradable for the shares out there, it's easy to get to some... Uh, uh, short squeezes going on, and we're seeing a little bit of that over the last few days. Uh, of course, uh, the Mr. Wood Woodsman uh, basically said that they're getting into the drone business and uh, making a camera that uh, is uh, multi-dimensional. Uh, as far as I know, everybody that wanted one has bought one. I'm really going to look forward to the next couple of quarters for earnings out here. And uh, when a lot more shares become available and the lockup is over, I think there's a much bigger lockup coming out uh, in several stocks out in September and October. I suspect that's when you're going to see the real value of this company. Right now, it is a beanie baby being uh, tossed around back and forth between the shorts and the long in a very, very thin market. IMAX um, had some uh, nice news out here. Talk about uh, a winner. Uh, people willing to go and spend for that big application announced that it's a China subsidiary has filed an application for a planned IPO in Hong Kong. Oh, how could that go wrong at all? I don't know. Momo, another one out here, uh, off 5%. Uh, again, it's all about uh, the China business, but uh, this one looked very suspect over the last uh, little bit. Just from the available news, it was down a lot more earlier out here, but uh, some of these stocks out here that are uh, very questionable, let's put it that way, uh, like a what is it, ATHM is one of those uh, kind of down auto home. Uh, so you want to keep an eye on that one. QUNR is another one of these out here that uh, is uh, Kunar. Uh, Another one of these that uh, is suspect, uh, so keep an eye on that. Is, uh, do I have any else in my list? CMCM of the ones that uh, you should keep a close eye on out here. Uh, Cheetah Mobile. All these things are dubious at best uh, because of their involvement in China, so uh, keep an eye on that. Again, tonight, the thing to be watching, I suspect, is how and if we see any continuation with that Shanghai and, of course, the rest of the Asian markets on the downside. Uh, House of Cards, if you ask me. And uh, I suspect, since you're listening, you did ask me in kind of a way. But uh, I do digress. In the meantime, hang on for two more hours of Tom O'Brien and then Andy Heck. Where he's going to talk about hot animal futures, I suspect. Tonight. So when you can, not when you have to. I'll meet you here tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Same bat channel, same bat time. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.